Hello, welcome to a second video about using matter.js. So in the previous video, I kind of ended with this, which is just a simple demonstration of falling rectangles landing on a ground. So I want to do two things in this video to expand on our sort of knowledge and sense of what matter.js can do. I want to change these falling rectangles into circles, and I want to change the way that the boundary works in that I want to make the, this bottom boundary, I want to be able to put it as an angle and maybe put a bunch of them. So there's one of the matter.js examples is essentially this. Let's just go to the website because I'm going to need, uh, I'm going to need the documents open, for the documentation open. So at some point here, uh, um, one will come. Let's wait for it. There, no, that's not it. <laughs> maybe that was it. <laughs> maybe it's not there. Look at all these demonstrations. And there it is, this one. I want to kind of make this. That one, do you see that one? So let's, um, so what do I need to do? So first of all, in, I did this sort of terrible thing where this bottom thing, which I'm calling a boundary or the floor, was kind of hard coded. So let's fix that. Um, and I, there's gonna be some redundancy here, but I'm gonna live with the redundancy. I'm gonna make another JavaScript file called boundary.js. That's in the right place. And then I'm not gonna forget this time, in index.html, I'm going to add another reference to uh, boundary.js. Now what I want to do is in this ground variable, instead of creating the body right here, I want to say new boundary, which is my own thing, and uh, I'm going to use those same arguments. 200 height, uh, and then I'm going to get rid of options, and then what I'm going to add under options is um, in the boundary object, whoops, where's that boundary object? Oh, it's, it says box here. Wait, 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 wait. Ah, yeah, box. This needs to say boundary. And I'm going to add is static true. So by definition, this idea of a boundary, I mean, boundary is probably the wrong word, but is going to be something that doesn't move, that's inflexible, that's in one place in the code. Okay. So now uh, I should then be able to say, and let's make it a different color. Uh, the, the boxes are kind of like a white outline and a gray interior, just so we see that it's something different. Let's give it a white outline and a, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm like afraid to use color, <laughs> a, uh, a black, dark, a black interior. Okay, so everything should be the same right now. I'm gonna change things about boxes versus boundaries. But now if I make the ground a boundary, then I should be able to just say, I don't need any of this down here. I can just say ground.show. So if I ever change the way the boundary works, then um, I don't have to worry about that. So let's see. So this still works exactly the same way. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm like annoyed with the fact that the outline is bleeding off the edge here. So I'm gonna kind of for no good reason uh, change this to like, you know what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go into boundary and not have it have a stroke. So I'm going to say, um, I'm not going to have any outline to that color. I'm going to say no stroke. Okay, there we go. This is more like what I want. Okay, so we're in good shape. Now, here's the thing. I want to demonstrate a problem that happened in the previous video. So I'm going to change right now having engine, I'm not going to say engine update in, uh, in draw. I'm going to go back to having, um, engine.run in setup. So this will allow, with engine.update, I'm manually telling the physics system to move ahead a moment of time every time through draw, which is kind of good. It's like move ahead, draw, move ahead, draw. With engine.run, it's gonna run on its own behind the scenes, separate from how I'm drawing. You'll actually see stuff appear to be moving faster because there's gonna, it's gonna, the engine's gonna be running at 60 frames per second where my actual draw loop might be less. So let me just do that. Still works fine, but you know, I don't know what's better. I, I, um, anyway, I feel like I have more control, but what I want to show you is the issue is if I now change the, um, that boundary at the bottom to something like, it's only like uh, three pixels, you can see that some stuff is working, but let me go up here. Look, sometimes the, the rectangles like fall through the bottom. Did you see that one? Oh, I was standing behind it. It fell through. Let me find it to get another one. Ah, come on, happen, bug. And there you go, you can see some of them are, are falling through. So the reason why this is happening is because there aren't enough time steps. It, the mo it's checking where the object is, then it moves it and checks again, and it's actually jumped over the obstacle. So um, 
There are, there's a number of ways we could fix this. Number one, the way I fix it is just like, oh, okay, just make the ground thicker. And now this problem can't happen. Um, and so that's one way of, of fixing it. Um, but there's actually, uh, a, there's, I'm going to put engine.update back into the draw loop. If you look in the documentation, which I showed yesterday, there are uh, variables here. There are arguments you can pass through about time steps. And Liabru uh, on Twitter, the creator of the um, matter.js library, wrote to me and said, the issue of skipping is best solved like you did by using thicker floor or a smaller time step or multiple updates per step. So that's something you can do. But uh, Liabru writes, there is a feature called continuous collisions that I am working on that solves the issue for any time step. So that's coming forward. So that was great to hear that. It's so wonderful to like do a tutorial about a physics engine and have the creator of the open source a library uh, weigh in and, and provide feedback. So thank you for that, Liabru on Twitter. Okay, so now let's keep going with this. The next thing I want to demonstrate is I want to see if I can turn that obstacle at an angle. So uh, let's look at the boundary object. So this is where I'm creating the rec rectangle object and it's the variables in this dot body. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to say console.log this dot body. Let's look at what some of the properties are. And here's a property angle. So this leads me to believe that I could most likely just set the angle to a value and it would change it. So let's try that. Let's try saying something like this dot angle equals uh, pi divided by four, which is about 45 degrees in radians. Right? Pi divided by 2 is 90 degrees. So let's do that. Hmm. <laughs> no, what am I missing? Oh, oh, ah, ah. <laughs> I'm just being silly. It's this dot body dot angle. So when I say this dot angle, this dot, this dot, this dot, ah, when I say this dot angle, I'm adding a property called angle to my boundary. But remember, my boundary object is simply a wrapper, really, for the matter.js body object. So I need to say this dot body angle, and that should fix this for me. There we go. So now we can see, ooh, whoa, weird stuff happening. Crazy weird stuff happening. Uh, is there an initial angle? Can I do this? Is this better? If I just set it as an option at the beginning? Let's try that. Ah, there we go. Okay, so it looks like this is, so this is a classic thing that happens with physics engine. I violated the laws of physics by just setting its angle directly. The only reason its angle would change is if a force, some thing was probably added to it that instigated the, oh, and I'm not looking at the chat. Um, um, so, so I have a feeling that you just can't set the angle directly unless you kind of work with the mechanics of how the physics engine is behind the scenes. So if I want to change its angle while it's running, I need to maybe apply an angular velocity or an angular force to have it turn. So that's nice to see that that's uh, fixed. Um, so let's, let's add a bunch of these. Um, let's uh, go to sketch.js and let's say var, uh, just call it boundaries as an array. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, in I'm I'm going to create a bunch of them. Let's uh, let's say um, boundaries dot uh, boundaries dot push. So let me just push this boundary. Now here's the thing. I want to give it an angle. So let me give it an angle like uh, the new boundary also has an angle of pi divided by four. So I can go into the boundary object and uh, change, add another argument like A for angle and put that in here. And so what I want now is to, um, let's make it like pi divided by, let's just, you know, pi divide, let's just, let's just put some values in like 0.3 so it's at a slight angle. Let's not make it so tall, 50. Uh, let's, um, so let's see here and uh, let's, um, and then what I want to do is uh, here say for var i equals zero. I want to render all of the boundaries. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> ah, I, 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 mm. For some reason today is the day where my code, lines of code are so long and going off the edge. Uh, Boundaries.show. So let's see what I've got going on here. I have some errors. Sketch.js line 20. What did I not do correctly here? Oops, I got the semicolon in the wrong place. Uh, matter.js, ooh, type of undefined sketch 22. 
Um, oh, 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 I don't need to add it here. Uh, oh, I wonder if that also caused a problem because I added it twice. Um, but because it gets added, the thing that I did is added here. So I don't need that other. That's been a mistake that's been in the code. Uh, and let's see here. Okay, so we can see here this is working. Uh, I've got a boundary there. And so now let's add some other ones. Let's add another one at uh, height divided by 2. Uh, and let's have it go the other angle, the other direction. So now, and let's make these uh, shorter with times 0.6 or whatever. I, you know, I could hard code values in. And so now, oh, and let's move this one over. Oops. Let's like move this to 250, 150. So you get the idea. Oh, no, that's not really right. <laughs> let's turn, let's make this one, uh, you know, let's, what, what's the size? Let's make this one 300. Let's make this one 200. Uh, let's make this negative 0.3. Let's make this, I'm sure I could make a clever loop. There we go. Uh, this is kind of what I was looking to do, but I want this one now to be much higher up, uh, which this bottom one, uh, this is the higher up one. Uh, let's make that even higher up and let's make this uh, then just like 20 here. Uh, okay, so you can see what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to create a system like, now the friction is quite high. Look how much the friction is causing these things to stop. So let's at least fix that. In the boundary, the friction is 0.3. I can't remember, is it zero? Is no friction or a lot of friction? That looks like they're sliding more or less. I can't tell. Let's go to the box and also give it no friction. There we go. So now that's no friction, but maybe I want a little bit of friction and maybe I want a little bit of friction on each. Uh, and then uh, also what, what I said I wanted to do is I wanted to change the rectangles. Boy, there's, that's really a lot of friction. <laughs> you can play around with those values. Um, I wonder if it's zero on the boundary. Um, right, look at all that friction. Uh, oops. I'm gonna, uh, really, was it really no friction with zero? Yeah. Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, now also, I want to change those rectangles into circles because why not? Uh, so I'm going to go into the box and I could change the name of it from box, but really what I want to do is change this to circle. And I have a guess that what circle wants is maybe x, y, whoops, x, y radius. So x, y radius, I'm going to change that in sketch to just make, when I click the mouse, to add one with a single radius. Uh, and then I am going to <laughs> uh, change the way that I draw it to be an ellipse uh, with an R instead of a W and an H. So let's do that. And here we go. Uh, what am I missing? Sketch.js line 30 uh, and I uh, boxes.push push new box mouse x mouse y this closes random this I need another parentheses there and here we go. Now it looks like my size is off so let's go look at the documentation it's kind of working we can see the circles are like hitting the, uh, they're, they're kind of like above the actual, um, they're actually above the actual uh, boundary. So let's go to the matter.js documentation. Let's go to uh, bodies. Let's look for circle. X, Y radius. I know what the problem is. I was right all along. But P5 doesn't expect a radius, it expects a diameter. So all I need to do to fix this is actually where I'm drawing, and let me call this circle just to be uh, consistent. And in uh, sketch.js, I'm going to now call this uh, circles, and I'm going to change this to new circle. And I've got to go through uh, circles.length and change this to circles. And now what I need to do, I'm going to leave this as box.js just for right now. I need to say this.r times 2. And now, Oops, uh, sketch.js line 30. I missed one reference. Ah, circles.push. So we can see there we go. Now these are kind of large. <laughs> so I know that, uh, let me just change this between 5 and 10. And I'm also going to do uh, mouse dragged. So now what I can do is just wee 
add a lot of circles, and we can see I mostly have that demo we had before. And actually, I'm kind of along the way of almost creating a kind of liquid simulation. Because if you could imagine if you were to change the way the behaviors of these kind of work, make these really, really tiny, um, you would almost have something that has a kind of like liquidy like quality to it. Okay, so now what I've done is I did a second video where I showed you a bit more about how I can have two different kinds of objects, a static one, we looked at circles, we kind of played around with friction a little bit. So hopefully this helps you see a bit more about using matter.js. And uh, in the next video, what I'm gonna show you is how to actually have the mouse interact with this so I can kind of drag these objects around and toss them. And I'm gonna look at a concept called a constraint for that. Okay, see you soon.